Hi guys, welcome to another video. This is for Functional Skills Level 2, Past Paper 1. If you're new to my channel, I will be doing a lot of videos for Level 1, Level 2, and also GCSE as well. And if you're one of the many people who watch my videos but haven't subscribed yet, I would appreciate if you would subscribe, support my channel, and hopefully I'll make more content as well. If you're part of my class, you can download these notes from Google Classroom, or if you're not part of my class, you can download these from the link in the description below. Let's go straight into it. Section A, this is non-calculator. 1A, work out 5.2 times 9.6. So without the calculator, we're gonna have to write it like this. Yep, this is how you normally multiply two numbers together. And uh, let's just ignore the decimal points for now. So all the numbers at the top are gonna to multiply all the numbers at the bottom. So you always start from the right-hand side. Two times six gives you 12. Put the two down, carry the one. 5 times 6 is 30, plus the 1 is 31. So that's the 6 done. And now you've got to multiply all the numbers at the top with the 9. But think of it as a 90 instead. You know, if you ignore the decimal points, um, it'll be in the tens column. So put a 0 down, and you can think of it as a 9 now. So 2 times 9 is 18. Put the 8, carry the 1. 5 times 9 is 45, plus the 1 is 46 and you add these two rows together. So two add zero is two, one add eight is nine, three add six is nine, and you just got you just have a four there, okay? And now we put the decimal point back in. So you check how many decimal places this had, and it had one decimal place, and how many decimal places did this number have, and it had one decimal place as well. So all together, you've got two decimal places, so your decimal point goes there. So your answer is going to be 49.92, and let's put that in the, uh, in the answer box. Yep, two marks for that, so obviously get one mark for your working, one mark for your answer. Part B says, work out four times three squared, hopefully you know that this means squared just to make a note of that so obviously uh, don't think of it as three times two don't fall into that trap squared literally means multiplied by itself so it's four times three times three and obviously three times three gives you nine so it's four times nine and there's only one thing left to do four times nine gives you 36 yep for one mark so uh, if you get any other answer apart from 36 it would be wrong so that's uh, question one done. Three marks in total. Let's move on to question two. Question two, on Thursday evening, Malcolm's bank balance was minus 107 pounds and 35 pence. On Friday morning, 1,867 pounds and 68 pence is paid into his bank account. 715 pounds, 21 pence is paid out of, of his bank account. No other payments occur work out how much money is in Malcolm's bank account on Friday evening for three marks. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, me personally, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, because obviously we've got minus here and the, the, uh, the amount that's going to be paid out, that's going to be taken away as well. The amount that's going to be paid in, that's going to be a positive value. So what we could do is add the, um, 107.35 with the 715.21 add those two together and then take that away from the positive value what you're left with is what he'll have in his account so um you know you could have done it differently but me personally i would do let's add these two together 715 21 pence with the 107 and 35 pence let's add these two together so that gives me six there, five there, decimal point is there, make sure you line up the decimal points. Five out of seven is 12, carry the one. That gives me two, and that's an eight. So that's gonna be 822 pounds and 56. Going, that's gonna go out of his account. Oh, it's gonna be a minus, isn't it? Think of it as you're gonna subtract this from his account, basically. So the positive value was one, eight, six, 7.68 and if we take away the negative 
So take away this. This should tell us what we'll have left in his bank. Yep. So eight take away six is two. Six take away five is one. That take away that is five. That take away that is four. That's a zero. And that's a one. Yep. So in pounds, that's going to be what's going to be left in his bank account on Friday evening. So yeah, let's put that in the answer box. One thousand forty-five. and 12 pence yep three marks for doing that you could have done it differently but as long as you get this answer 1045 pounds 12 pence you know you'll get three marks however you do that let's move on to question three question three akash needs to put plastic trim on a shaped window the window is made using a rectangle and a semicircle diagram shows the places where he needs to put the plastic trim so as you can see all these dark lines or the plastic trim okay Akash estimates that he will need 700 centimeters of plastic trim in total use estimation to check if Akash's estimate is sensible you must show you're working for four marks yep so um, keyword in this is obviously estimation yep so when it says estimation you can't use these numbers as they are you're gonna have to round them so I would round that to 170. Let's call 59 centimeters. Let's call that 60 centimeters. Don't forget centimeters. And let's call that 110 centimeters. I'm not going to call it 115 because, you know, if you add these two together again, you should get 170 the total on that side as well. So I want to make sure both sides are, are um, equal. Uh, bottom here, let's call that 120 to the nearest 10. So any big numbers, I would round to the nearest 10. Yeah. Uh, so in fact, I did it for all of them. All of these numbers, they were to the nearest 10. Yeah. And I did get all these answers. That's all of them. So if we're going to do um, the total, we're going to have to add these together, including the trim inside as well here. Yeah. So if uh, if we're going to need this one as well, that's going to be the same as the bottom, which is 120. Let's put that in as well. And these ones here, if you think of the semicircle, from, from the centre to the edge, that's actually one radius, isn't it? Which is the same as 60 or half of, half of the diameter. So each one of these is going to be 60 as well. So this one here is 60 centimeters and this one here as well is going to be 60 as well so let's put that in as well so that's all of them we might need to work out the uh, the semicircle as well um, which we'll do in fact let's do that first so let's do the uh, perimeter of the semicircle So I'm going to need the um, the outside edge of the semicircle. So if you think, imagine if it's like a full circle, you would do circumference equals pi times the diameter. But we've got half a circle or a semicircle, so we're going to have to half that. And we're not going to use 3.14 for pi. Remember, this is non-calculator. They don't want to they don't want you to use 3.14 in fact so you know think of pi as we're not going to use 3.14 for pi so think of it as um again you know it's just a number so we're going to round 3.14 as well because we remember we rounded all these other numbers so let's call pi roughly three yeah so that's going to be three times diameter is 120 and we're going to halve it. So that's going to give you 3 times 60, isn't it? It's the same as 3 times 60, which is 180 centimetres. So that's going to be the um, the outer edge. So that's going to be um, this bit here, the, the bit that goes around the circle, this bit. So that's that done. And now we can add everything else. And we should get our answer. So total is 180 
Uh, so that's the um, semicircle bit at the top. In fact, let me put that in. 180 is here. Uh, plus, I'm going to do the big ones first. Let's do 170. No, in fact, we can't do 170 because I'm not, I'm not going to add that whole edge arm, am I, from top to bottom. In fact, I only need this bit here which is technically the same as 110 on this side. So, so I'm going to add 180 width. Um, let's do 120. Let's do this one here with 110, 120, and then 110 again. So 180 plus 110, 120 for the top edge of the uh, rectangle, 120 for the bottom edge. Hundred and ten along this side, on the right hand side. Okay, so that's the rectangular bit done, and also don't forget the radius as well of the semicircle. So a sixty here and a sixty here as well inside. I think that's all of them. Just double check. So I'm going to add them up like a big sum. Yeah, so that's probably the best way of doing it. We could do it in stages, whichever. I'm going to just do it all in one go. Just notice I didn't add the 170, you know, so you're not adding the uh, 110 twice on this side, on the left-hand side. Just make sure that you only add it once on the left-hand side. And yeah, that's all of them. So if we add, add it up like a big sum, that's all the ones that I need to add. So obviously that's zero. Uh, eight add one is nine, plus two is 11, plus another two is 13, 14, 20, 26. So I'll put a 6 down, carry the 2. 2 plus 1 is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, right. So it should be 760 centimeters for his estimate. What did he say? So Akash estimates that he needs, he will need 700 centimeters. Where is it? 700 centimeters of plastic trim in total. So no, he's, uh, he's a little bit short. He's pretty close, but not close enough, unfortunately. So I would say no, he's not right. Yeah, so use estimate, estimation to check if uh, Akash's uh, estimate is sensible. Um, I would say no for that. And you'd, I would probably say 760 is greater than 700, so no. Um, so it's not sensible. His um, estimation is a little bit too low. Um, so he needs to be a bit bit more accurate I'm afraid you know he's not gonna have enough trim is he so uh, if he had about 700 and let's say 780 or 800 if he's had 800 centimeters then that would be that would be decent yeah that's more than enough um, that would be more sensible so 700 is not sensible I'm afraid so no yeah that's question three done let's move on to question four question four Calvin is a trained company manager he compares the arrival times of a morning train service for 10 days in the summer and for 10 days in the winter. In the summer, the median number of minutes late was 12.7 minutes. The range of the number of minutes late was 11 minutes. The results below show the number of minutes late in the winter. Calvin thinks that in the winter, the medium number of minutes late increases. The train service is less consistent. Is Calvin correct? Show why you think this giving reasons with your answers. Six marks. Wow. A lot of marks for one question and they give us loads of space right so um, this is one of those questions where you need to know when it's talking about median range less consistent more consistent and things like that you need to compare one set of data with another so we're comparing the summer data with the winter data right so I'll put summer here And let's put winter on this side. Yeah, I would always separate it. So for the summer, we're told that the, what did it say? In the summer, the median is 12.7 minutes. So we're already told that. So we're told that median equals 12.7 minutes. Okay. And the range was 11 minutes, right? So for the summer, we're told the values. Okay, so for the winter, 
we need to work out the winter median and the range from this uh, data set right here. Yes, yeah, so these numbers. So we're going to have to work out the uh, medium. So for obviously um, median, you have to put them in order from smallest to largest usually. And um, you work your way towards the center to find the middle value. So let's put them in order first. So five is the smallest one, then eight and nine. And we've got 10. Then we've got 14, 17. What's next? 26. 32 and 44. Oh, one more, 67. Yep, and that's all of them done. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, and now you just cross them off the list, working your way towards the center. So this goes with this. This goes with this, this goes with this, this goes with this, and you should have two in the middle. And we need the middle of these, so to get the middle of these, just move the page down a little bit, you're going to have to add them and halve it. Let's add them like these, so 4 add 7 is 11. Put the one down, carry the one, and that's going to be a three. So it's 31 divided by two. And again, you're going to have to um, halve it. So uh, let's do the bus stop method. Might need a decimal point and a zero afterwards. Um, so two into three goes once, remainder one. Two into 11 is five, remainder one. Two into 10 is five. So the median for winter is 15.5 so median equals 15.5 for winter that's going to be in minutes so he was saying uh, calvin thinks that in the winter the median number uh, late increases yes he's right so um <clears throat> so calvin is correct uh, so we can say median in winter increases so Calvin is correct yep or something along those lines so there's your proof that the um, he was correct about the median and now we have to talk about which one is less consistent and which one is more consistent and that's to do with the range so to work out the range uh, let me just uh, delete these. Right, so there's my numbers again, and that's how I can see them clearly. The biggest one was 67, and the smallest one was 5. So, range is biggest take away smallest. So I have to do 67 take away 5. So range, 67 take away 5, which gives you 62 minutes. Yeah, so um, what this means is when they're talking about which one is less consistent, which one is more consistent. Basically, think of range as the spread of the data. So can you see that we had a very large range for the winter? The, the largest one was 67 and the smallest one was 5. And you've got all the other numbers in between. So that's a very large range. That means the data is more spread out so therefore if the data is more spread out that is going to be less consistent whereas can you see for the summer let me just move the screen up for the summer the uh, the range was very small compared to the winter so the range was only 11 minutes for the summer so that means all the data is very compact it's all in one place so the data is less spread out so it would be more consistent for the summer so think of it like this, 
Less means more, more means less. It's a little bit confusing, but think of it as the spread of the data. That's how you should uh, think of it. So we can say, uh, or what did he think? Calvin thinks that in the winter, train service is less consistent. Um, yeah, he's right again, because in the winter, uh, the range was bigger. So bigger range means the data is more spread out. That means it is less consistent. So yes, he's correct. So we can say um, in winter range is greater. Therefore, spread of data is more, therefore, less consistent. Yeah, that's good enough. So um, there's your proof that the uh, the range is less consistent. Oh, and we, we need to say, so uh, Calvin is correct. Maybe it's a little bit more long-winded than I should have done, but yeah, I think it's a good idea just to be um, be on the safe side. Do uh, explain why you think he's correct, and that'll get you six marks in total for that. So a lot of marks for one question, but you know, you just have to break it down. Obviously, do the median first, say whether he's correct or not, and then work out the range separately again. Just uh, say whether he's correct or not. Yeah, and that'll get you six marks in total. Oh, and that was the last question. So, um, you know, I'd probably write the comments in here in this uh, answer box here and just say the same as what I said before. Um, even if you don't, you know, to be honest, it's absolutely fine as long as you can uh, make sure that your comments are nice and clear uh, for the person marking it. And, uh, you know, you'll get full marks for that. That's section A done. And I'll go on to section B right now, which is the calculate paper. So give me two seconds and I'll put section B on the screen. Okay, so this is section B. This is the calculator one. So this is one hour, 30 minutes long. And obviously you're gonna need a uh, calculator, ideally a scientific calculator uh, when you do this paper. Let's go straight to question one. Question one, Adam works for an agency. His normal hourly rate is £8.32. Agency asks Adam to work six hours for a new company. Adam will be paid time and a third of his normal hourly rate. How much will Adam get paid in total when working for the new company? So you need to know what this means, time and a third. So it's the same as his normally hourly rate, but a third extra. Yeah, so it's like overtime pay, isn't it? Um, so we need to work out six hours plus a third on top of that as well. So you could work out a third first. So you could do one third of £8.32, uh, which is the same as 8.32 divided by three. And uh, let's work that on the calculator. So 8.32 divided by three, that gives you 2.77, three recurring, the little dot above the uh, three. Um, and because it's uh, time and a third, you add it on to the original. So just move this down a little bit. So time and a third would be 8.32 plus 2.773 recurring. And that gives you Let's, again, let's try that on the calculator. Gives you um, 11 pounds and 09. And there's a little, th again, a three with a dot above the uh, above the three. So um, you can call it 11 pound and nine pence. You can, you could round it now if you wanted to. Um, so let's call it 11 pounds and nine pence per hour yeah um so i think it's uh, i think it's a good idea to 
to make a note of that because um, you know just to show them what you're using for your hourly rate now um, and because it's going to be for six hours you're going to have to times that by six so for six hours that times six gives you 66 pounds and 54 pence yep that's your final answer so just to clarify um, you know if you didn't round this and just used it as it is and multiplied by six obviously it'll be a few pence more than that so uh, you know in the mark scheme they would accept that I have I have checked the mark scheme and they would would accept anything between 66 pound 54 and 66 pound 60 I believe so uh, you know that's absolutely fine if you have a uh, roughly about about 66 pound 54 pence as long as you show you're working out justify your answer that's uh, good enough well, let's move on to question two question two here is a square base pyramid and we've told that the formula for volume of a pyramid is third times area of the base times the height work out the volume of this pyramid for three marks so um you know if you given the formula in the question definitely you have to uh, I would use it, you know, don't start using your own thing. So um, let's write this down. Volume equals third times area of the base times the height. So um, we're going to do a third times well, the area of the base. Well, that's your base right there. Yeah, this bit here is your base which is technically a uh, square because it's a square base pyramid yeah it even says in the question so um, if the base is a square you just have to work out area of the base or you can just type it in I'll tell you what I'll do it all in one go you could do it in stages if you wanted to but me personally I'm gonna do well we know that area of the base is gonna be 8.5 times 8.5 yep one length multiplied by one width and let's replace the height as well with the height let me just double check on the diagram height is this thing here yeah 12.6 let's put that there and you can type this whole thing in your calculator or you can do it in stages and I'm going to just type it in as it is so a third and you can use one divided by three for a third if you want to if you don't want to use the uh, fraction button times that times that times 12.6 and uh, as a decimal should be 303.45 and that's going to be centimeters cubed yeah because it's all uh, it's all in centimeters anyway so uh, if it's volume yeah it even says in the uh, answer box so uh, yeah three marks just for doing that and like I said you know you could have done it in stages or do it only in one go makes no difference as long as you show you're working out what you typed in your calculator that's what they're looking for yeah so the key thing here is the area of the base you just need to know that the, that the base is a, is a square and uh, hopefully you guys know area of a square is length times width well, let's move on to question three question three Rana donated four charities last year she gave 175 pounds to each of these charities this year Rana wants to donate the same total amount between six charities each charity will receive an equal amount. How much will each charity receive this year for three marks? So um, if it's the same total, or what was the total before? Well, that's, let's work out total, which is four times 175, as they each got 175 pounds. So on the calculator, four times 175, 700. And, you know, don't, try and work out manually if you've got your calculator just stick it in the calculator you know and just try and work it and just work it out you know just uh, don't waste any time trying to work it out yourself you're not going to get any extra brownie points then it says um, this year runner wants to donate the same total so it's going to be the same total for this year as well uh, but this time she's going to divide it between uh, six charities so 700 shared between six charities you're gonna have to divide by six gives you uh so on the calculator it looks like this obviously without the pound sign on the 
calculator. But um, you know, obviously we have to write it in terms of pounds and pence. So that's the same as six recurring. That six goes on forever. So to two decimal places, I would round it to well, I would round it down to 66 because you're not going to have 67. If each charity head did have 67 pence, £116.67, that's going to go over the £700. So I would round this one down to 116 and 66 pence each. Yep, and that will get you three marks for part A. Again, just out of interest, if you did put £116.67, pence, you know, it's not wrong. I've, I have, again, I've checked the uh, mark scheme. So uh, they would accept £116.67 pence as well. Part B says use reverse calculation to check your answer. So obviously when, you, when it asks for the uh, reverse calculation, you're going to have to work backwards from your answer. So for me personally, obviously my answer was £116.67 and 66 pence and um, working backwards well the opposite of the last thing I did the last thing I did was divide by six so I'm gonna have to times by six and that gives me obviously uh, I'm gonna have to type that in my calculator because I rounded my answer don't forget so um, you know don't just assume it's gonna be uh, the same answer on my calculator, it comes up as £699.96, which is roughly £700. Yep, so I didn't get exactly £700, you know, when I worked backwards, because my answer was a rounded answer, even though I rounded it myself, uh, even though it didn't say. But, um, you know, if you work backwards in my situation, in this case, you know, I... I would get mm, not exactly 700 pounds but you got pretty I got pretty close to it you know which is roughly equal to 700 pounds and I would mention that you know if you did get anything like this and uh, that'll get you the uh, extra mark question four Sammy is a roofer here is a section of a roof made from straight pieces of wood okay Sammy knows that the shaded triangle is an equilateral triangle so this one right here uh, the line DB is a, is a line of symmetry, so that's uh, the one down the centre. Uh, the line ABC is a straight line, so that's that one there at the base. And the size of the angle marked X indicates the pitch of the roof. Right, so um, we have a funny little table here with pitch and angle as well. Table shows information about the pitch and the angle of the roof, yeah, which I just mentioned. Find the value of x and and use the table to give the pitch of the roof for three marks. So we have to give the angle and the pitch as well. So uh, obviously once we've worked out the angle, we can just refer back to this table and give our answer for the pitch as well. So th the main thing here is working out what the angle is for, for x. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You know, you could... Um, me personally, let's fill in the blanks directly on the uh, diagram and um, we can show some working out as well. So obviously if this is an equilateral triangle, I'm only going to deal with half this this uh, roof by the way because obviously this is your line of symmetry. So the reason they've said that is because you know they just want you to deal with one of these uh, uh, halves anyway. So if this, this is an equilateral triangle, that's going to be 60 here. That's going to be 60 and this is going to be 60 as well yeah so that's uh, that's what we know about equilateral triangles they're all going to be equal therefore they're all going to be 60 inside so um, we know that this angle here is 90 degrees that big angle there so, and um, if that's 60 that's 90 the whole angle there is 90 this must be 30 then yeah because if you do 90 take away 90 take away 60 leaves you with 30 okay so um what else can we do um i'll tell you what i'm gonna use i'm gonna use this big triangle right here can you see the big triangle i could work out each and every single 
angle, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use that as a big triangle. And we know that all the angles in the corners of a big triangle, of any triangle, add up to 180 degrees. So let me do it in a different color. Let me show you what I'm doing. So um, basically this angle and this angle and this angle right here. Can you see those three angles? They should add up to 180. So if they add up to 180, we already know that that's 60, that's 90. So X must equal, let me write this down, X must equal 180. Take away 90, which is that angle there, this corner. Take away 60, which is that angle there. Should leave us with X. And if you stick that in the calculator, you'll get 30 degrees. There's your answer for X. Yeah, and you can write this um, this working out in the uh, in the box below. Um, right here, I've done it at the top. It's absolutely fine, even if you do it at the top here as well. As long as they can see it, just make sure it's not on the uh, edges where it says "Do not write in this area" because obviously they're not going to see that when they scan it. Yep. So uh, anywhere in this box is fine, and you can do it on the diagram as well. Definitely. In fact, I'd recommend doing that. So we can put the angle is 30. Let's put that in the answer box. And let's go back to the table. So where is 30 degrees on the uh, table? There it is. So 30 degrees is there. And that refers to this pitch here, which is pitch seven. So uh, my answer is going to be seven for the pitch. Yep, and you get three marks for that. Some working out, which I've shown here, even though it's up here, it's absolutely fine. And uh, just show that X is 30 and the pitch is seven, you'll get three marks for that question. Yep, looked a bit complicated to begin with, but you know, don't let that put you off. Just do it bit by bit. And I could have worked out all these angles. You know, that's probably the long way of doing it, but you know, um, hope you like this this way of doing it and it gets your answer pretty much, you know, as, as uh, quick as possible. You don't want to spend ages on something like this for only three marks. Let's move on to the next question. Question five. Sammy wants to work out the cost of the tiles needed to replace a roof. The roof has four identical faces. Each face is a triangle. Each triangle has a base length of 7.6 meters and a height of 4.8 meters. Sammy has this information. Roof tiles. One pack of tiles covers 13.8 meters squared, including overlaps. Each pack costs 716 pounds, 10 pence. Sammy can only buy whole packs of these tiles. Calculate total cost of the tiles for the four faces of this roof. Five marks. So um, if you imagine um, the roof is made up of four triangles and they're all identical. So um, let's draw what they're talking about. Let's draw, let's draw one of these triangles. Let's say this is one of my triangles. I know it's not necessarily going to be this shape. But um, all I need is the base and the height. So they, say that they said that the base was 7.6 meters. So that's 7.6. And the height was 4.8 meters. 4.8, so that's 4.8 there. And uh, how do we work out area of a triangle? Well, area of a triangle, hopefully you know, is base times height and you divide it by two. If you don't know that, you do need to memorize this. You need to know that it's like half a rectangle. Um, so obviously it's uh, 7.6 times 4.8 and you halve it. Yep, so just type that in our calculators. So I'm gonna do 7.6 times 4.8 divided by 2 and you get 18.24 and that's going to be meters squared so that's for one of these tiles we've got four identical ones so i'm going to times that by four so 18.24 let's multiply that by four 
I get 72.96 meters squared. Okay, so that's for the four tiles. What's next? Uh, so we, we're told that one pack of tiles covers 13.8 meters squared. So how many 13.8s go into that will tell me how many tiles I need. So let's divide it by 13.8. So 72.96 divided by 13.8. This will, this will tell us how many tiles he needs. Uh, so it's come up as 5.286 and so on. That's going to be number of, not tiles, sorry, that's going to be packs, isn't it? That's going to be packs. I'm going to label it. That's how many packs he needs. And so um, he can only buy whole packs. So obviously he can't go into the store and buy 0.286 of a pack. So technically he needs six packs. Again, you know, five packs is not going to be enough. So definitely uh, six packs needed. I'm going to write. OK, that's uh, very important. So. Um, each pack costs 716 pounds. OK, so I'm going to have to do so I'm going to do six times 716 pounds and 10 pence. So six times 700 and what was it? Uh, 16 pounds and 10 pence, right? Yeah, so this should give me. Uh, on the calculator, it is. 4,296.6 on the calculator, but obviously um, you're going to have to write it in the correct format, so you're going to have to stick that zero on the end to make it 60 pence. And that should be your final answer. Let me just double check what's it asking for. Calculate total cost. Yeah, there you go. Total cost is this. Yeah, and don't forget the zero on the end, otherwise you would get marked down for that. And I'll get you five marks for that. Let's move on to the next question. Question six, Farah is buying clothes from a website. The website shows this information about a jacket Farah wants to buy. So jacket original price was 30 pounds and 99 pence. Sale price is 16 pounds. The website claims this is a saving of 46%. Is the sale price a saving of 46% on the original price? Show why you think this. So, um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You could work out. Obviously, the saving means the saving is the difference between the original price and the sale price. And then um, the percentage. You can compare that with this percentage that they're talking about. So, um, yeah, in fact, I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to do. It's kind of like. Um, percentage change isn't it where you're working out the difference over the original and then times by 100 in fact that is actually exactly what we're doing we're doing a percentage change where you can see a change happening in the question change over the original times by 100 yeah and you'll get your answer as a uh, percentage so um what is the change? The change is the difference between the original and the sale price. So that is 30.99 take away 16. So let's do that on the uh, calculator. That gives me 14.99. So that's 14 pounds 99. So that's the saving. Yeah, so this represents the saving in pounds yeah so um, if I stick that in my formula that's uh, 14.99 over the original which was 30 point uh, 30 pounds 99 that's the original price so that goes at the bottom of my formula so 30 pounds 99 and you want it as a percentage you times by 100 so let's see what percentage we get 14 pound 99 divided by 30.99 times by 100 oh you get about 
that's going to be percent for your answer. So uh, what did uh, what do they say? The website claims that this is a saving of forty six percent. No, it's not. It's a saving of forty eight percent. So uh, so no, it's not right. Um, it's not the same as forty six percent, is it? So there's uh, one way of doing it. There are other ways as well. Me personally, I would just stick to this way. You know, you not you don't want to overcomplicate. It's only three marks, and um, just show that you're comparing the percentages. You could have done. Um, you could have worked out what 46% of the original is and then compare it with the sale price. You could do it that way as well. There's quite a few ways of doing this one. But um, me personally, I would uh, I would do it this way. And, uh, you know, hopefully that made sense to you guys as well. Well, let's move on to the next question. Question seven. Here's a quadrilateral. Draw this shape on the grid. Use the scale one centimeter to 40 meters. Right, so and just see the uh, grid right so the grid is um what they're saying is each of these squares is a centimeter each on the page and these look like these look like the measurements in real life yeah so 220 meters that's it's quite big isn't it so these are the measurements in real life and we need to scale them back down to the page where one centimeter represents every 40 meters so to scale it back you know to um, find out how many squares we need for each one we're gonna have to divide these by 40 yeah let's do that on the calculator so 340 divide by 40 is 8.5 so that's eight and a half let's call them I'm gonna call them centimeters you can call them squares if you want to so basically eight and a half of these squares or centimeters same for this, let's divide by 40, you should get exactly 4 centimetres. And divide this by 40, let's do that on the calculator, and you get 5.5, so again 5.5 centimetres. So, um, how to start this off, well, me personally I would do the base near the bottom, uh, so that's going to be 8.5 um, I'd probably start off, uh, let's see, just start it there and just do eight and a half across. And then from that, I'm going to go up and then do the top bit and then join, join the um, top and bottom with the diagonal. Yeah, the diagonal will be the last thing I do. So um, I'm going to do this. Just give me a couple of seconds and you should see the uh, final result in a moment. Yep, so as you can see, I've got eight and a half for the bottom, four for the uh, the vertical that's going up here, and then five and a half at the top. And the very last thing I did was this um, diagonal right here. So that'll be the very last step. And you get two marks for doing that. You don't need to label it or anything. That's good enough. Just draw the shape and you'll get two marks. Part B says, use your answer to part A to work out the actual length of the line AD. Remember to use the grid and the scale. So obviously... Um, you're going to have to use your ruler to measure, uh, what is it, AD. Well, AD was this diagonal here. Yeah, so um, you're going to have to use your scale drawing here and measure it. I wouldn't count the squares. It's not going to be accurate. So I would measure it. Each one of these, um, whatever, whatever centimeters you get, we're going to have to change it to the actual length. So uh, let me get my ruler and I'll show you what it should be. So there's my ruler, and as you can see, the uh, the length of the AD should be uh, exactly five centimeters. So um, that's the the length on the on the page. So they want the actual length, the one in real life. So we're gonna have to use our scale. So the scale is one centimeter to forty meters. So that's on the uh, the map or the page. And this is in real life. So we've got five centimeters. Um, so um, we're going this way. Or you could go the other way. You know, you can go from the one to 40. So uh, I'm going to go this way, though. I'm going to go from the one to five. You times by five. So I'm going to have to times 40 by five. And I should get my um, actual distance uh, of the line AD. And that's going to be. 200 
meters. Yeah, that should be your answer for another two marks. So the key thing here is, is um, mentioning that you're doing 40 times by five. I've shown it here and you get 200. That's your working out. Yep, yeah, and that's your answer for that one. Question eight, Pablo is investigating the relationship between the land area and the population of eight European countries. He has this information. So you have country land area in thousand kilometers squared and you have population in 2018 in millions. Right, so you've got the UK here, there's um, two blank values here. Pablo finds out that in the UK, uh, land area is 93,400 square miles. Population in 2011 was 56.1 million. Population increased by 19.6% between 2011 and 2018, right? He wants to add this information to the table above. He will round the land area to the nearest 10,000 and round the population to the nearest million. Pablo knows that one square mile equals 2.6 kilometers squared. Draw a suitable graph and write a comment about the correlation. Ah, remember to complete the table and use the grid to draw your graph. So when he's talking about correlation, that to me tells me they're talking about a scatter graph. Let me just just double check the next page. Yes, it is. Yeah, this is going to be a scatter graph. Yeah, on the next page. We'll come to the scatter graph in a minute. Let me just go back to the original question. So we have to fill in the blanks here and here. So they're going to be so they're going to be uh, land area in thousands and population. Which one should we do first? So um, I'm going to do the land area first. So they're talking about um, let's do the land. Let's do the land area first. So the land area is ninety three thousand four hundred square miles. We have to change that to kilometers squared because this table is to do with kilometers squared, isn't it? Here. And it's in thousands as well. So um, let me use this uh, conversion here. So I'm going to write that here. One square mile equals 2.6 kilometers squared. That's what we're told. OK, we're going to change this many square miles. So 93. 1400 square miles okay so I'm going this way I'm going from the number 1 to 2.6 so I'm looking at the numbers now and to get from 1 to 2.6 I'll have to times by 2.6 so I'll have to do the same going this way yep I'll have to times by 2.6 let me just move my screen down so uh, on my calculator, I'm going to do 93,400 times 2.6. Uh, gives me a weird answer. It's like 242840. And that's going to be kilometers squared. OK, so um, we have to give our answer in thousands. You can see all of these are thousands. So, for example, Germany. That's 360,000 kilometers squared and so on and so on and so on. So for my answer for the UK, my thousand column is, in fact, let me rewrite this. Two, four, two, eight, four, zero. Okay. Kilometers squared. These are my units. That's my tens. That's my hundreds. That's my nearest thousand. And this is my nearest 10,000. So in fact, they want it to the nearest 10,000. Let me just double check. They said, yeah, he'll round the land area to the nearest 10,000. Let me highlight that bit there. Yeah, so you want to, um, you want to round it. Let me just uh, show off where the cutoff point is. To the nearest 10,000 is that four there. So that you need to, that's your cutoff line there. So the two is going to decide what happens to the four on this side. So that stays the same. That stays the same. So it's going to be 
technically, how do we say that? That's going to be 240,000 as your answer. So that's going to be um, 240. That goes there. That's going to be in 240,000 is technically your answer. So that's that done for your land area. Let's do the population, but they did mention that the population increased by 19.6%. So it was 56.1 million. Um, we need to increase by 19.6, right? So let me do that on the next page. So uh, 56.1, in fact, let me do that up here. So um, 56.1. Uh, we're going to increase that by 19.6%. So um, if it's an increase of 19.6%, I'm going to increase it or multiply it by 119.6%. Yeah, because that's what I'll have in total. So um, that's the same as 56.1 times 119.6 over 100. Yeah, or I could have written it the other way around, 119.6% of 56.1. Makes no difference which way around. Just make sure that the uh, you're dividing by 100. So 56.1 times 119.6 divided by 100, uh, which is 67.0956. And again, to the nearest million... Well, that's to the nearest whole number in this case, basically. That's going to be 67 million. So that should be your answer. I could have done it in stages. I could have worked out 19.6% and then added it on, but that's a long way of doing it. Should know that if you're increasing by um, if you're increasing by 19.6%, it's going to be 119.6% of the original. So uh, which is what which is what I just did. So um, you know the quick way just working out. 119.6% and you get 67 to the nearest million. These are all in millions, aren't they? Yeah. So that's um that's that done. That's that table done. So we've probably got three marks so far. The next three marks are for the uh, for the uh, scatter graph. So I'm going to leave my table here. Let's um, switch to the scatter graph, which is on the next page. Right, so we've got land area at the bottom, population in millions. So the first one is 360 for the land area, and 83 for the population. So 360. So each one of these represents um, 20, isn't it? So 360 is going to be there. And what was it? 83. 360 is there, so three, um, let me see where that's going to be, so that's going to be 82 is there, 83 is going to be halfway, so there's my first one, there's my first point, so yeah, you have to be as accurate as possible, so 360 across, 83 up is right there, I'm going to carry on and do the rest, so just give me two seconds, I'm going to do the rest. And I'll show you the completed scatter graph in a moment. So there's all my crosses done. Uh, so if you want to pause it and double check with your answers. Uh, I've tried to be as accurate as possible. So hopefully you guys have got the uh, same answer. So once you've done your graph, obviously there is one more thing we need to do. Let me just go back to the question. Uh, it did say draw a suitable graph, which we've done. And write a comment about the correlation. So uh, I don't think it's uh, enough just to say that it's a positive correlation. You know, you do have to write some kind of sentence or some kind of um, statement. Uh, you can mention positive correlation, but I'd go into a bit more detail because they said write a comment about the correlation. So uh, I would say just by looking at it, you know, just uh, a general trend as the land area increases, the population increases as well. Yeah, and I'll mention positive correlation as well. So uh, let's say as a general trend, as the land 
area increases population increases as well and I'd put in brackets positive correlation yeah something along these lines and do mention the positive correlation as well just to make sure that the uh, the person marking it under that you know that uh, you understand it as well um, uh, yeah so I think it's not enough to just write positive correlation for for that I did check the mark scheme and um, they did have quite a big comment for for that actually so um, you know when they say write a comment you have to write literally quite you know uh, quite a big sentence for showing what is actually going on in this in this uh, correlation yep so hopefully uh, that made sense sometimes they do just say what is the correlation and just say positive or negative in this case we had to write a comment so uh, you know it's pretty obvious that they want some kind of sentence well, let's move on to the next question question nine magda wants to compare the population density of the two largest countries in the world she can use this formula so k equals p over 2.59 m where k is the population density people per kilometer squared p is the population in millions m is the land area million square miles canada has a population density of 3.57 people per kilometer squared Russia has a population of 143.96 million, land area of 6.593 million square miles. Magda thinks that Russia has a greater population density than, can than Canada. Is Magda correct? Show why you think this. So um, we already have what Canada is. So Canada has a population density of 3.57 people per kilometer squared. So we have to work out what Russia, uh, Russia's population de density is using this formula. So if you work out what K is, that'll give us the... Um, population density and then we can compare it with Canada's so let's use this formula k equals let me write this down k equals p over 2.59 m okay and hopefully you you know that because you have something side by side like this Hopefully you know that there's an invisible multiplication sign here. So whatever M it is, it's multiplying 2.59 at the bottom. So um, K is what we're trying to work out. P is the population. Let me just double check. Population in millions. So Russia had a population of 143.96 million. So we have to put 143.96 just like that yeah so that's in millions already over 2.59 times m whatever m is so m was the um, land area in again a million square miles so land area here is 6.593 million square miles so it's just 6.593 for m so six point five nine three what they're doing is they're just testing are you good with the calculator can you type that in can you get the correct answer so i'm gonna type this in just be careful with this because you can very easily type this incorrectly so i'm using my fraction button just to be on the safe side and i get 8.4306 and it goes on forever I'll write all of them down just to be on the safe side um, and that's going to be in what was it again people per people per kilometer squared wasn't it for K people per kilometer squared yeah, so that's for Russia. So um, now we can compare it with Canada. So Canada has a population density of 3.57 people per kilometer squared. She, she thinks that Russia has a greater population density. Yes, yeah, she's right. So we can say 8.43 is greater than, what was it? 
3.57. So yes, she is correct. And there's your proof. Three marks for doing that. And uh, that's that done. Well, let's move on to the next question. Question 10a, work out three and three eighths, take away nine eighths. Give your answer as a mixed number, two marks. So um, again, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, the best way is if you change them all to top heavy or improper fraction, that's the best way. So um, you've got three and three eighths, take away nine eighths so to change the first one to improper fraction you multiply these two together and you add this so um three times eight gives you 24 plus the three to 27 over eight um minus nine over eight so now your answer is going to be out of eight as well the same denominator 27 take away nine is 18 and uh, so now uh, this is not your final answer by the way so you have to give your answer as a mixed number so the way to change it is you'll have to check how many eights go into 18 which is twice two eights are 16 and you've got a little bit left over which is two and then it's going to be out of eight as well and you could simplify it even more if you want to so you can call it two and a quarter so um, either answer, to be honest, you can give your answer as two and two eighths or two and a quarter. I'm going to give it as two and a quarter for my answer. Part B says use estimation to show a check of your answer. So um, when you use estimation, you're supposed to round these numbers. Um, so you can call three and three eighths, let's call it roughly... Let's call it three. And you're taking away nine over eight. Uh, nine over eight is roughly equal to one whole. Yeah, so to the nearest whole numbers, it's three take away one, which gives you roughly two, which um, again, which is roughly two and a quarter your answer that you got here so um that's one way of doing it you could have done a reverse percentage uh, sorry not reverse percentage a reverse calculation as well you know could have worked backwards but just use your rounded uh, numbers so i could use two here and the opposite of takeaway is add and if you add one whole should give you roughly three as your answer which is roughly equal to three and three eighths so um couple of ways of doing that that's all it is me personally i would just do it the same way as before just do normal takeaway but use your rounded figures let's move on to the next question question 11 emilio makes metal fences he's making a fence using this design the fence will need three horizontal metal pieces so it looks like it's these can you see these horizontal ones so you've got one at the top one in the middle one at the bottom there there's the three horizontal pieces of length 1.8 meters yep two tall metal pieces of length 1.44 those are the ones on the ends here that one and that one uh five medium metal pieces uh, so there's one two three four five yep five medium metal pieces and six short ones one two three four Five, six, yeah. Heights of the tall, medium, short metal pieces are in the ratio nine to eight to seven. How many meters of metal in total does Emilio need to make the fence for five marks? So let's write this um, ratio down nine to eight to seven. So that's tall to medium to short. Yeah, in the order it's written. So um, obviously we don't know what the medium and the short ones are, what their lengths are. We do know the tall one though. The tall one is that one there, 1.44. So we can use that. That is going to be 
1.44 meters there. So um, <clears throat> how do I get from this to this? How do I get from 9 to 1.44? You could times it by... So basically, how many nines go into that? What I did was, on the side, I worked out I worked out 1.44 divided by 9. That gave me 0.16. So uh, to get from 9 to 1.44, I'll have to times it by 0.16. So you'll have to do the rest. Uh, you'll have to do the same to the rest as well. So uh, 8 times 0.16 is... 1.28 and let's do this seven times 0.16 as well separately that's 1.12 so that's all of them so the tall one is 1.44 meters the medium is 1.28 meters and the short one is 1.12 meters they're the uh, the lengths of all of them now so um now we can just work it out, can't we? So we've got three horizontal pieces. So three times the horizontal gives me three times 1.8, which is, let's work that out, three times 1.8 is 5.4. I'll need two tall pieces, two times 1.44 2.88 5 medium pieces so that's going to be 5 times the medium 5 times um, that's going to be 1.28 each so that's going to be 5 times 1.28 that's 6.4. Uh, what else did it say? What about the short ones? Uh, 6 short. So 6 times the short ones. 6 times uh, this one right here, 1.12. Yep, so that's 6 times 1.12. That gives me uh, 6.72 meters and if I add up all these the total equals 5.4 plus 2.88 plus 6.4 plus 6.72 is that all of them I'll just make sure horizontal tall medium and short yeah that's all of them yeah so this should give me my final answer 21.4 meters so that's what he needs so yeah that's my final answer and you're done yep how many marks was that five marks for that wow okay so um yeah i hope that made sense it looked a bit complicated at first but obviously um they're talking about this diagram they're talking about the horizontal the tall pieces the medium pieces hopefully hope you know which ones they're talking about um i mean you can even say that you know these are the and uh, this is one of the tall ones here for example and this one here is a horizontal yeah so you can label it if you want to you know and just um, um you know make it easier for you to see to visualize um well that's your answer for that one let's move on to the next question Question 12. Table shows information about 60 holidays bought by customers at a travel agency. Right, so you've got holiday type, room only, bed and breakfast, all inclusive. Obviously you've got totals and you've got couples and families and their totals as well. Complete the table above. So hopefully you've seen something like this before. This is a two-way table. So it goes two ways and you'll have totals for each of these, totals for each of these as well going across and going down as well. So you slowly, slowly fill in the table. So, for example, you know, if it's 60 here in the corner, it's 34 up here. This missing one must be 60 take away 34. And, uh, you know, if it's on the calculator, just use your calculator 
to work it out. And that's obviously 26. Next, I would probably do this one. And I can go this way or I can go across. So that's going to be um, 13 when you do 23 take away 10. Uh, or I could have done 34 take away 18 or, and uh, 3. And you should be left with 13 going that way. Now I can do this one going this way. So let's do 26 take away 10 take away 14. That leaves me with 2. Add these two together, give me 5. Add these two together gives me 32. Yeah, and let's just double check if I add these three together. I should get 60, and I do. Yeah. So um, get two marks for doing that. Part B says, a customer who bought a holiday at the travel agency is chosen at random. What is the probability that this customer bought an all-inclusive holiday for a couple? Give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form for two marks. So this is where you have to be a little bit careful. They always um, ask you the uh, who they're picking from. They always tell you who they're picking from first in the first part of the um, question. And then they're telling you the, uh, the numerator in this part here. So this is who they're picking from in, in this sentence. A customer who bought a holiday at the travel agency is chosen at random. So they're picking from everyone who bought a holiday at the travel agency. Let's go back to the table. Well, everyone who bought a holiday was all of these guys. That's all of them. So that's 60 people. This shows 60 holidays bought by customers. So it's definitely out of 60. That's the first step. So I'm going to write um, here's my fraction. Definitely out of 60. That's the first bit. What is the probability that this customer bought an all-inclusive holiday for a couple? So out of the 60 people, couples who bought an all-inclusive holiday were these guys. Yep, so can you see couples, all-inclusive, That they both meet here. So it's 18 all-inclusive couples. So it's 18 out of 60. And all I have to do is simplify it. So don't give this as your final answer. We just have to simplify it. You could do it on a calculator. You just type in 18 over 60. And it'll simplify it for you. Or you can do it manually. You could divide both top and bottom by 6. And you get 3 over 10 for your answer. Yeah, don't forget to put it in the uh, answer box here. Because they uh, have given you the answer box. You know, so I think it's a good idea to write it in here. Two marks for that. I could have done it in stages as well. Or, you know, just use your calculator, which I did. And it'll simplify it for you. It'll do all the hard work. Well, last question then. Part C. This is the uh, tricky one. I'd say it's a bit of a tricky one to uh, uh, explain and also understand as well. But I'll try my best. Travel agent says, of the couples and families who bought holidays... The couples were more likely to have bought an all-inclusive holiday. Is the travel agent correct for two marks? So basically what they're asking is, we're looking at the couples and the families separately. Um, so you can have two different fractions and we're going to compare which fraction or which answer is going to be the bigger one, which is going to be more likely. Okay, so... I'm going to put, let's say, for example, let's do couples here and let's do families here. OK, because we're comparing these two. OK, so they're saying which one is going to be more likely, this one or this one. So from the couples who bought holidays, that's who we're picking from. So couples who bought holidays were these guys. Yep. so it's uh, everyone who bought a um, holiday, so all the couples who bought holiday, sorry, is out of 34. That's the first step. So definitely couples is out of 34. And out of these guys, how many bought a holiday? Um, sorry, how many bought an all inclusive holiday? So from the couples, so out of 34, uh, all inclusive was this one. So that's 18 out of 34. Yep, so that's my fraction. From the families, so who the all the ones that 
um, the families, all the families that bought holidays were these guys. So it's out of 26. That's your first step. So families is out of 26. And out of these guys, which one is bought all inclusive? Well, it's these guys here. 14 out of 26 bought holidays. So that's your fraction for families. So which one is more likely? So they're saying which fraction is bigger, this one or this one? Well, me personally, I would just, let's change them to decimals. And you can use your calculator for that. Let's do 18 divided by 34. And press the SD button. And you get 0 0.529411. And it goes on forever. And there's a little dot there. And let's do the same for this. 14 divided by 26 equals that. SD it. 0 0.538. Right. So, um, As you can see, they both start 0 0.5 recurring, and then the next number, that's a 2, that's a 3. So which one's bigger? Definitely families. So he thinks, or he or she thinks, the travel agent says, the couples were more likely. No, the families were more likely. So um, travel agent is, is incorrect, so no. Yeah, so uh, yeah, they're wrong. It was the, it was the families who were more likely to... Uh, to have bought very slightly, you no know, very, very slight difference, but yeah, it's still, still slightly more than the, uh, than the couples. That's your answer for that one. Just add up your score and uh, hopefully you got all of them right. Uh, the pass mark would be th roughly 38 speaking. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, this, this is recorded um, in June, 2023. So, um, you know, if you got roughly about 38 out of 64, that would be considered a pass. Hope you found that useful. And if you did, don't forget to like my video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And, um, you know, I will try to make some more level two videos. Definitely, I'm going to try and increase those. And uh, I shall see you in the next one.